Thank you. So good morning. It's, it's wonderful to be here on um, what is recognised as Ngunnawal country. My name is Gabrielle Journey Jones. I haven't got my information up there, but it is in the brochure. Um, I'm here from Creative Women Down Under, based, it's been based in Sydney for the last 10 years to tell you a bit about this initiative. Um, so I would like to firstly acknowledge the traditional owners. I grew up here in Canberra. I was never taught the truth about this land and it was, that it was never ceded, that it was stolen at genocidal cost to the traditional owners. I didn't even know the names of the different tribal groups and language groups that this land was taken from. So I'd just like to acknowledge the Ngunnawal, Ngambri, Ngaragu people. And I'm encouraged as a woman with Maori and African American bloodlines that more truthful black store histories of Australia are increasingly being available to us to learn from and to pay our respects and to teach our children. So last weekend, I had the pleasure of meeting Eve Ensler, creator of the Vagina Monologues and the One Billion Rising campaign to stop violence against women and girls. In her talk at Antidote at the Sydney Opera House, Eve said many wonderfully inspiring things. Two of her points sum up um, the intention of creative women down under. Firstly, she said that everybody needs a posse, a group, a community to go out with and resist, to resist oppression and to fight for our rights. Georgina Abrahams, co-founder of Creative Women Down Under, and I decided in 2006 that we wanted to organise our own posse of women to share creative adventures with, because nothing like that existed in our area in the inner west. You could basically go out to a pub, you could go out to gigs, but you couldn't really, yeah, create, um, intentionally create community for women wanting to do creative things. So Georgina and I are both social workers, we were responding to the idea that accessing our creative expression and providing opportunities for other women to do the same would give much needed respite and rest from battling every day with life, our rights, constant, vigilism, uh, constant vigilance and activism. We see creativity as a very necessary antidote to life stress. Eve Ensler's second point is the reason we see creativity as one pathway back to happiness. She said, when women are in trauma, one of the first things to go is joy, and we need creativity to reconnect and resist. So there is a strong link between activism and resistance which begins with first reconnecting creatively with oneself. We wanted Creative Women Down Under to offer tools for women to relight their fire after trauma, everyday life, and professional fatigue. So many of us are burnt out working in the human services field um, or anywhere that actually requires us to be completely present and to give all that we have and that we are in the provision of support to others. So the resilience of Creative Women Down Under relates to our persistence of will. Over 10 years to continue organising events and sharing information for the benefit of women's creative community as a voluntary extra um, initiative uh, to our lives which includes raising two young children and caring for our elders and working and pursuing our own creative projects. I'm a poet and a drummer, and I apply the lens of intersectional feminism to my work, and I often encourage truth speaking about the complex structural layers of oppression that we deal with as women. I am looking forward to the publication of my first poetry collection called Spoken Medicine. That'll be out in November by Jin and Derek Press, who were actually based in Canberra for a long time before they moved to Adelaide. And I've got a special poem to read at the end of this if there's time. So I'm going to race through. Okay. So what exactly are we about? So I've got this little postcard out here. We're quite creative. It's over 10 cents at office work. You get your own business card. So this has got a, it's out at the front desk and it's just got a little bit about us and how you can contact us. Um, what we do. Basically, our vision is to connect women and creative expression. We spell women with a Y to clearly identify ourselves as feminists, and we're also highly supportive of other queer women. So we began 11 years ago by inviting friends to our events and using creativity as a basis for building personal resilience to help us all rest and reconnect with ourselves and others. We didn't have a strategic or business plan. We organised events we just thought women would enjoy. Our actions were simple, um, but consistently thorough to invite an artist or a writer to teach a group of us some of their skills for an afternoon, for an evening, a whole day or a weekend. We then arrange a venue and send an email invitation to our friends and networks, put a flyer online and promote it regularly, and all of the money would go directly to the artist. 
So we weren't paying for insurance, we weren't paying for great um, yeah, venue hire, that sort of thing. The artists got the money. And it's one of the things we noticed that women weren't, a lot of women were volunteering their time. They weren't even getting paid to share their artwork sometimes. And so we wanted to address this as well. Um, so over the last decade, we moved from small visual arts, drumming, poetry workshops of about six to 10 women to regular house concerts, averaging about 70 attendees. And we liked the idea of using homes um, so that it was an accessible, inclusive venue, that it would be child friendly, or if not child friendly, if the event wasn't child friendly, we could get childcare to the house um, for women. Um, so, and our largest event was held in 2011, with over a 1,000 women joining us at the Sydney Opera House for Lesbians in the House concert. Um, this was a 20-year reunion from something that was organised in 1991 to rally the, rally the troops, I guess. Um, and we had over 100 um, lesbian musicians, artists on stage. It was five hours long. And we included Auslan interpreters. And one of them is in the room today, I just found out. So, yeah, just shout out to Dayla over there. So we, we invited lesbian interpreters to come and... Um, and uh, provide for us at the event so that people, so it was as accessible as possible. That was great. So um, as a social worker, my background is spending over a decade working in disability organisations. I work in terms of um, policy and um, strategy around making organisations, helping them to comply with what they need to do. So accessibility has been a huge thing for us at Creative Women. Um, so. Okay, I'm just going to flip over. So altogether, during that time, um, we've held 31 major events for women, including festivals, weekend retreats, the concerts I mentioned, or workshops in mixed media, drawing, sculpture, watercolour painting. Um, we've held a lot of creativity support groups. I don't know if anyone has um, heard of The Artist Way um, by Julia Cameron, so we've held a lot of those. And yeah, we just, we, we've been doing it because we love it and I've sort of applied to come and talk about it today just to give you an idea of um, the topic was resilience over 10 years. We just keep on going because we see the benefit of it. Um, we do operate outside of um, regulation or donor funding frameworks. Um, and there, I did want to mention Lesbians Incorporated. That's one organisation that's been going for about 20 years, giving funding to lesbian projects without um, needing an ABN, without needing to have a charity status. So just give props to them. You can, I can give you that information if you've got a project. They fund up to $1,000 blocks. Yeah. So we found they're quite useful, actually. Georgina was instrumental in setting that group up. Um, so. I might be going, popping off track here. Yeah, so we're completely unfunded and we run the events because we're passionate about it. Um, all we want to do is gather women for our creative adventures um, and challenge women's oppression along the way um, by finding our own voice through creativity. Um, as I said, we didn't want to become a legal entity. A lot of people have said, why don't you incorporate, then you can get um, funding as a charity status, but all that seemed to be operating in a patriarchal setting that we didn't want to get involved with and we just want to gather women at the lowest possible cost for them and accessibility. So um, I'll flip over here. And I guess, I mean, I've, I've, in the program it says it's a collective. It's a collective of two, but we are really, so I don't know if we can really be called a collective, but we certainly have had a lot of support by a lot of close friends along the way. So we haven't been doing it by ourselves. We've, all, all the way along it's been, yeah, building community and people in, getting involved and helping us. Um, Okay, so last weekend, I'm just giving a quick example of one of our events in detail. Um, while I went to Antidote at the Sydney Opera House, Georgina ran our 22nd women's retreat. So sometimes we'd actually have two a year. Um, it's women only, so it's one of our few things that only women can go to. The rest of the things, um, children are involved. But it's a special time for women to just gather with our kids. And um, it was the first time I could go in eight years because we have our sons eight. Um, yeah, so it was great to get back to that space. And just talking about how we can build community, um, we had 68 women at Pennant Hills on Garingai land in New South Wales. They'd come from local and interstate areas. 
Um, they got to practice yoga, meditation, make music, share poetry, and enjoy community. We had a really very special guest speaker, Venerable Rabina Corton. She was passing, literally passing through at that time, and we've had long connections with her, and she came in and gave a one-hour talk, um, which was really inspiring. Um, she's a Tibetan, Australian Tibetan Buddhist nun who is an activist in prisons around the world. So she came along and inspired everyone, and that's just like a little example we try to do things that add some extra meaning to things because of that connection. So essentially our feminist utopia centers on thinking and planning creatively about making um, extra meaningful connections, I guess, by collaborating with our friends and networks and our mutual supporters and not relying on and not waiting for funding opportunities, which may also impose restrictions on our initiatives so we can do what, whatever we like, which is great. Um, so in saying that, yeah, we donate the time of, and cost of our online presence, our website and social media. Um, we're passionate about the information that we circulate. We love to find things like today's event and um, promote that and try to get people coming along. Um, so I'm just going to skip through because I've got... That was basically the key thing. So we're all about, like, we get people to tell us what's happening and we try to tell as many people about it as well. And we try to support things, research projects, just by coming along and participating. Ten lessons and challenges for ut feminist utopia gav gatherings from creative women down under. Number one, if you organise it, they will come. But don't rely on Facebook event RSVPs for your catering lists. Like, cut that by a third, forget about it. Um, and be, build the community with the people that show up. Small numbers are fine. Number two, if you're passionate about it, go for it. Create with whatever resources you have. Do not wait on funding bodies um, to make your creative adventures a reality. Three, when working with a small group of two, a collective of two, we found it's a lot easier to have one person as the project leader and they make the last call and there's no blaming. Okay. Um, well, you can blame that person. Four, um, be completely thorough in your planning. So planning should be 50% of what you do. Five, you don't need to do everything yourself. Accept help if it's available and ask if you need to. I think many of us are raised with the idea that we should need to be independent and do everything ourselves. Forget that. That's not going to work. You know, I think in a, trying to get out of patriarchal frameworks, it's, yeah, it's good, good to be vulnerable. Um, number six, developing your networks offline and in real t life takes time. Um, so don't give up, up and keep reaching out to people. Sometimes it feels a bit embarrassing. Like I reach out, I've started up a Poets of Colour sort of collective that we're trying to get together. And um, yeah, it's hard to just reach out and say, do you guys want to do this? And everyone's busy. <coughs> and if, so anyway, it's, 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 yeah, what I'm trying to say is um, just keep reaching out and and hope for the best with building. Number seven, build a reputation of re reliability. If you say you're gonna do something, then do it and try not to cancel events unless you need to. Eight, develop trust, inclusion and belonging with your, within your initiatives by being trustworthy, inclusive and welcoming. Um, don't just say it, actually do it. Like people know before you have an event that you're actually you know, caring about the fact that you're on indigenous land and caring about the fact of what's gonna happen in the space that people know that it's a safe space. Number nine, be explicit about common values and shared goals when you work with creative project partners. And ten, be aware of self-censorship. Take time to reflect on your level of participation in creative communities. Give what you want to in the spaces that you choose and be happy to rest when you need to because it can get tiring engaging creatively. So, um, yeah, we've got a little bit of time for the... I think it's only about one minute. Okay, so that's a snapshot. I wrote this in 2008 at a drum camp um, in New York at the Catskill Mountains. So my passions are drumming, poetry and women's community. It all comes together in this piece which is coming out in my book. So, The happening is happening. Mesmerising energy of women dancing. Spirited sounds dancing out of the hall. Flying through the fire, skimming across the lake. Drums serenade each other. Heartbeat drum at the pulse, 24 hours in the zone, never alone, like the voice of women which will not drown in patriarchal oppression, the voice of women through percussion carries our survival celebrations, drum circle communion, creators of community, strength, ritual and beauty, the voice of women in the rhythms and the silent spaces in the pause for effect, applause and respect. Of course, we expect our intentions to woman-fest 
anchored in moments like this as monuments to the rich, deep connections within ourselves, sustained, honoured and upheld by our sisters with drums. We choose the happening during busy lives because we've gathered this way since the beginning of time. Thank you.